Hi, welcome everybody. Today is August the 6th, 2018. Uh, welcome to Public Labs August Open Hour. And today we're really celebrating um, a successful and quite large Summer of Code program. Um, we're joined here by Rails Girls Summer of Code students, as well as Google Summer of Code students. And um, speaking as a staff person of Public Lab, I couldn't be happier. Um, a couple other staff um, mentors from um, Public Lab are here, um, including uh, Jeff and Stevie and Sebastian and Bronwyn. And um, it's just really wonderful to have reached this point in the summer. What we're going to do today on the call is hear from each student to present their work in their own words. And uh, this, I'd like to hand it to Siddharth to um, actually um, give us the presentation order. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I am Siddharth. Today uh, we are having a SOC meeting. In this meeting, uh, we will be discussing our projects which we have built over the span of three months. Uh, so, first of all, I will be speaking about my project. Then uh, we can have Naman with it and Gaurav to explain their email notification call project. Then Saurav can explain his Rails 5 upgrade project. And then we can have Stephanie and Camilo. And then we can have Tech4 to explain his project. So uh, my project was about multi-party authentication system at public labs. Uh, this project is built to ease the authentication provided by uh, provided by public lab initially the public lab uh, enables you to log in and sign up uh, through their authentication form you can sign up through email uh, and providing the password now you can sign up by a click of a provider you can log in uh, through facebook twitter github and google uh, the code is fully tested in mini test under ddd and bdd uh, we have different we have used different gems for this project such as open ssl figaro Omniot, etc. Uh, basically, the project is divided into four parts the sign up process, login process, and linking and unlinking of the providers. Uh, you can go to the login page by publiclab.org slash login and you can log in through any of the provider. Once you log in, you will be able to see the two, see, see the two ways to log in. One is the form. You can fill in the username and the password, or you can click on any of the provider. If the pro, if you have an account through the exist through the provider, then that particular account will be accessed. Otherwise, your uh, provider's account will be linked to your public lab account. A similar approach is with the sign up. The sign up is found at publiclab.org slash sign up. You can go there uh, and uh, create your own account by following the sign up form or you can click on the provider once you click on the provider a new account will be created you will be sent an email from public lab to reset your password along with a welcome email to welcome you at public lab uh, apart from that we have uh, features on the edit profile page to link and unlink the providers once uh, you go to the public lab slash profile slash edit you will find uh, find the buttons of Google, Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub. You can click on these button, and then uh, you will be redirected to their website. And then you can log in to these provider and link the respective providers to your public lab account. If you want to unlink any provider, then you can go to the profile page and then uh, delete the user tag. This is the functionality of my project. Uh, for the slides, I have shared a link in the chat, Zoom chat. You can see the slides there. You can also, uh, if you if you would like, um, and just to walk through for everyone, um, if you go to the bottom on the Zoom, you click the green 
button, um, you can share your desktop if you'd like to um, share your slides with everyone through the Zoom. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I missed that button. We should have said something in the beginning. I forgot. I'm sorry. But for everyone um, who wants to share, <laughs> the green button at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so my project is multi-party authentication system uh, in the Google Summer of Code. I have built it with the help of OmniAuth. Uh, this project is built with the OmniAuth library. This library standardizes multi-party authentication system with the help of providers. I have used four providers in the project. These are Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Google. Uh, this project is fully tested under TDD, that is test-driven development, and BDD, that is behavior-driven development. I have used a set of different gems, such as OpenSSL for the HTTPS connection, Figaro for encryption of the environmental variables, and OmniAuth for the standardization of the providers. Uh, mainly, there are uh, five parts of this project. The first part is the sign-up process. The second is the login process. The third is the linking of the providers to the user account. The fourth is the unlinking of the providers from the user account. And fifth is the logout. Now let's discuss these pieces bit by bit. Uh, the first is the sign up process. Uh, in the sign up uh, if, uh, process, you can sign up through public lab either by the form, which is available on publiclab.org slash sign up, or you can sign up through a provider. If you want to sign up through a provider, uh, then you can click on the icon with, through which you want to connect. Once you connect through a provider, uh, uh, it, the public lab will search if uh, your email exists in the public lab database. If it exists in the public lab database, then uh, the provider will be linked to the public lab database. And if the provider does not exist in the public lab database, then a new account is created. The, uh, you will get an uh, email for reset of the password and you will get uh, a welcome email you can go to the public lab and reset your password and then you can use the login form uh, to log in through the username and password the password which you have reset in the reset form you can also log in through the providers listed here on the added profile page if you want to link any provider if you want to link Google or Twitter on any other provider to your existing public lab, you can do so by clicking on these icons. Apart from that, on the uh, profile page, on your profile page, you can unlink the providers by deleting the user tags. You can, you can click on the cross button and then uh, uh, click, delete that partic particular user tag. I thank my mentors for this project. Uh, yeah, Naman, can you please explain your project now? Uh, Siddharth, if you could uh, close your screen sharing as well, I think that way it can be someone else can take it over if they want. Yeah, I have closed. Oh, okay. Closed? Thank you. I think it's uh, still sharing. It might need, I can't remember exactly how to do this, but uh, it might be the green button on the bottom again and click stop screen share. Yeah. And Can Liz, stop you, you were muted or we can't hear you. We are not. Has it stopped? Soon. Yes, it's stopped now. Thank you. Okay, I am sharing my slide. Okay. So. So, uh, my project was uh, reply by email feature and reply by quiz feature. 
So the first thing that I did in my project was to include uh, whenever gem, uh, which is being used by uh, our tweet feature uh, for polling tweet every one minute or two minutes. And it, it is also used by Visit in his project for email digesting, for sending mails in uh, uh, in uh, one week or two weeks. So uh, in uh, my project goals was uh, implementing whenever gem, uh, reply by email feature. The third one is reply by tweet feature. And I have also done some of uh, the other issues uh, related uh, to this is just for uh, fun. Okay. So the first thing that I did was implementing the Vanilla Gem. Uh, when, what is the Vanilla Gem? Vanilla Gem is uh, the gem that makes uh, uh, it easy to write the Chrome jobs. Uh, uh, without it, it is difficult to write the Chrome jobs. Uh, using this gem, uh, we can uh, write uh, Chrome jobs very easily in Ruby. It, it is very simple. Just uh, it is uh, just like writing English in a code. Okay. So the it is being as I already already told you, uh, it is being used by. Uh, many pro multiple projects, uh, reply by tweet and uh, email digest project. And, uh, and the third one, uh, in the reply by tweet, it is used to call for new tweets every one minute. So the next next thing that I implemented was reply by email feature. So uh, the first uh, reply by email feature uh, can be used to reply to any note, uh, whether it is uh, notes uh, or it is question or it is answer, we can add the comment to it. Uh, using email, we do we do not have to open the public library website. Uh, whenever there is a comment or there is a note, we we got the mail, right? So uh, so this made the uh, this made it very convenient for the user to reply back. So as as it do not have to open his website, he can reply by uh, on his mail account. Like he if he is using Gmail, he can reply to Gmail. And his mail uh, his comment would automatically get added to the uh, public library post. So uh, the challenges that I faced uh, in this uh, feature were the different uh, different domains. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Gmail uses different type of uh, mail passing things, and Yahoo uses different type of mail uh, passing things, and or or and so much. Uh, so, so we do not have a single uh, passing uh, method for this. So for now, I have designed it for Gmail, Yahoo, and public lab uh, emails domains, and also uh, designed for uh, uh, emails that are using Google email services. I think public lab is also using Google email services. Okay, so it, uh, as I have already told, it can be used to comment on notes, uh, and it was also extended to questions and answers. Okay. So next thing that I am currently doing, uh, it will be completed by this week, is the reply by tweet feature. So in this feature, uh, whenever a note is uh, posted on the public live website, it uh, it goes to it. So, but uh, so what the, uh, this feature offers? So whenever a uh, user sees a public live post on his on the Twitter, he can reply uh, to that post on the Twitter, and his comment would automatically uh, got added to the public live website. So this will be very useful uh, as the uh, people do not have to open the website to comment. They, they can directly comment on the uh, uh, Twitter and their comment will be added to back to the uh, website. Okay. So this feature uh, uses tweet omni feature, uh, which is done by uh, Siddharth, uh, uh, which uses uh, which first verify the username of the Twitter. If if he belongs to our uh, public live website, that is. If we have uh, already signed up, so hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I think Naman's uh, video is. Or is very very that. That's his internet is very slow. You're good now, yeah. Naman. We hear you now. So this feature will be live soon. Uh, I think in a day or two. Okay. So the other work, uh, the other work I have done is Ajax notification feature. So this is a kind of making the website looking uh, more uh, uh, fancy type. Uh, this is not a. Uh, uh, this is uh, just to make a website look fancy. Uh, whenever a user click on a, a like button, it shows a notification that user have liked the uh, post or a comment. Whenever user comment. Uh, it shows a notification uh, like user commented or whenever a user delete. 
it asks for uh, uh, do you really want to delete the uh, comment uh, just like that so uh, the next feature that uh, i'm going to be working on uh, encoding emojis for uh, comment and answers so this feature is extending the oh, so what happens when we reply by email so there are certain images that go directly to my mysql so this uh, which uh, when uh, when the this feature is merged so we can also send uh, emojis via gmail uh, via reply by email and tweet so the uh, things that i am going to do this week is complete reply by email feature and i am also going to complete email sending notification uh, to, uh, to note publication uh, uh, thank you thank you Great, thanks so much, Naman. Wow. Um, Siddharth, it's back to you to call the next person. Okay, uh, so who is the next person in the list? Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry. Where to? Well, were we going to hear okay. from Guara? Okay. Yeah, uh, next is Goro. Yeah. So I am uh, disconnecting my share, slide share here. Ah, also, yeah, Naman, can you un uh, remove your screen sharing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super, thank you. Okay. And if, if you want to post your um, uh, presentation somewhere a little later, that would be awesome too. Yeah, I will post it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hi everyone, uh, my project was a uh, draft feature and email integration project. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank my mentors, uh, Jeff and Stevie, for backing me up uh, during, uh, during in, uh, duration, uh, in the duration of GSOC. Okay. Uh, for uh, all, of the, uh, all of the guys uh, who are new to the, uh, to the public live uh, open hour, uh, I'm Gaur Sadeva, you can find me by my, uh, by username Gorvano. Okay, so uh, in the beginning, my proposal goals were, uh, was a uh, draft feature and email integration project. And email integration project was further divided into uh, three categories: uh, reply by email to comment, uh, weekly digest, and UI for email notification settings. Uh, uh, so, but uh, as we are three participants, so we divided. And uh, uh, now uh, my project is uh, based on draft feature and UI. Uh, UI for email notification settings. So, uh, in the draft feature, draft feature uh, is a type of a research note in a saved form. So, draft feature would allow uh, users to save their research note as the user uh, and user can complete those notes uh, uh, anytime uh, at their own convenience. It would also allow user to generate a secret link uh, which he or she can uh, share with other users to have their review of his work. Uh, uh, this feature is tested uh, to the best of the privacy, uh, but we can't have 100% of privacy. So uh, I, I would request you guys, uh, you can try, uh, you try this feature and report any privacy issue if you face. Uh, there is uh, one demo video I have made. Okay, so how uh, this is how the draft is made. Uh, we type something, uh, we add com uh, content, we add tags. You can add tags, uh, there, uh, no notification will be sent. Uh, you have to check save as draft and just click save. Uh, there is also a wiki page I have made for the draft page, draft feature. Uh, okay, so this is the draft page created you can share the link you can edit it uh, as many times uh, you want adding information and again click save uh, now this draft will be accessible at two locations 
first is uh, the your own profile page there is a, a tab third tab add in a draft where you can see the draft demo oh. and other is your dashboard on your dashboard uh, it will uh, it would appear just like a, a node a moderated node so you can uh, and if you want to publish the draft you just need to click publish draft to make it public and that's it your draft just got published and it will now send all the notifications which are pending for the ta uh, tags and all other notification at uh, at the time of publishing the draft so uh, you are not missing any notifications uh, to your followers or uh, and nothing it it is just like a normal research node okay now moving to the next slide okay my next uh, project a uh, small uh, sub project was email settings now email settings is a new page uh, created at uh, public.lab.org uh, uh, settings from where user can choose uh, which type of notification emails they want to receive currently there are five settings available on the settings page uh, 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 it would look like this we are using a uh, user tags to uh, to store the settings uh, uh, if uh, any user creates or add uh, or removes any tag related to the settings then uh, it would uh, turn on or off the settings too so other work i have done uh, in in this duration is the comment moderation moderation system in this feature i have resembled the comments with nodes uh, uh, like no, uh, we can moderate nodes uh, mark it as spam and uh, and uh, approve them uh, now comments can also be marked as spammed and approved for the uh, we can check uh, whether the user if user have uh, commented for the first time we can uh, moderate those and so on so uh, an easy example of this feature is uh, moderation links uh, which would uh, which uh, now most of the mod moderators can see these links are added to the moderator uh, with each comment and thanks this is my project Mm, that's super. And uh, Gaurav, if you want to share the link to that presentation in the uh, IRC for people who are calling in, in the chat room, uh, I did that for an earlier one. Uh, so if you're ready. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm Thank sending. You. So next, I think we have Stephanie and Camilla. Actually, isn't I think Sarav is next uh, oh, in the list that I saw, and then them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, Gaurav, we can hear you. Okay. Sort Sarav. Here's my screen. And, and uh, although the presentations are really fantastic, uh, if anyone uh, didn't prepare one, don't feel bad. It was not a requirement to do that. So <laughs> this is really great to see. And if you want to show, for example, when you present, uh, like uh, uh, just a, a page on the website that shows your work, or you just want to talk about it, that's also great. So this is my project uh, I, I was expected to work on rails 5 upgrade uh, in this uh, gsoc i was selected for it so uh, this was the roadmap followed by me for the rails 5 upgrade uh, I, I was to first start with rails 4.2 upgrade and it was actually done before the gsoc um, I, as jeff uh, told me to work on it and actually jeff has also worked on uh, all the um, steps uh, initial steps followed for it and i worked after the uh, on, uh, the, about the errors and the failures that were uh, coming after the Rails 4.2 upgrade. Then I worked on Rails 5.0 upgrade at the starting of the uh, from the uh, starting of the GSOC. And um, uh, Emmanuel, uh, my second mentor, helped uh, in it in a great manner. And uh, also we uh, we also 
removed all the depreciation warnings, uh, errors, and failures that was occurring during Rails 5.0 upgrade. And since our uh, test uh, coverage was very good, so we we are actually able to tackle uh, this big up upgrade. Uh, but there were some uh, glitches, like uh, there were some errors in fix uh, in the routes. So we have to fix that uh, afterwards. But uh, that was also great, and we we overcome it um, uh, very. Uh, in a very efficient manner then we worked on then actually uh, uh, since we worked in Rails 5.0 upgrade uh, all the depreciation warnings so Rails 5.1 and Rails 5.2 upgrades were a little um, uh, they were uh, much few work in Rails 5.1 and Rails 5.2 work uh, upgrade and uh, all, all of these are completed at Rails 5 upgrade is uh, complete now so after that uh, I also worked on other other works like work on graphs. Uh, these these were uh, I worked on these before the GSOC, and uh, I am also contributing it uh, in a few days. Uh, as uh, Liz Barry showed a um, page where graphs were not modified, so I will work on it. And also uh, I also worked in uh, converting Jasmine test to Teaspoon Mocha, as uh, Jasmine tests were not, not running quite great and. Uh, there were no test running actually, so I converted it to teaspoon mocha and it's working fine now. And I am also currently working on uh, Bower, uh, converting uh, Bower to YAN so that our uh, JavaScript libraries uh, could be run on uh, YAN. Actually, Bower is depreciated for uh, Rails, and uh, uh, so we are converting it to YAN. And it's almost completed, but some tests are not working. Like Jenkins test is not working on the public lab unstable, and I will complete it by uh, uh, in few days. And this is the screenshot of Teaspoon Mocha, which is working fine now. And, uh, and these are my works on graphs, which I worked. This is the heat maps I have uh, introduced before the GSOC. And uh, it's, it's, it, also, it is also working great. And these are some graphs. Uh, hey, Saraf, can you change the slides to the new slide you're showing? OK. Where? Aren't the slides visible? Yes, uh, they no, are, but they're not moving. I wonder, is it presenting on another screen or something? Maybe so, we, we see just the uh, last slide. OK, OK. Sorry, sorry, sorry for it. No, it's OK. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I will show it from here. Oh, it takes a second. Um, yes, that's changing. Thank you. So this is the Rails 5 upgrade. And uh, this is the roadmap followed. Rails 4.2 upgrade, Rails 5.0. And these are all completed. And these are my other works, which I've worked on. And uh, these are the screenshots of the Teaspoon Mocha test, and it's working fine. And these are my works on graphs. Um, this is also, these are some works. And and thanks to mentors, uh, my mentors are Jeffrey Warren and uh, Emmanuel Hefford, and uh, they helped me quite in this uh, work, uh, in the upgrade work as, as well as the other works. And so, thank you. Yay, thank you so much. Yeah, I thought uh, Sebastian had a good comment on this, which is that for the first time in, in history, we're ahead of, are we ahead of Debian? Sebastian, I think so. <laughs> in in the version, yeah, we're 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 ahead of the current Debian. Uh, so, oh. so yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's hear. Let's have another presentation. And um, if your name isn't already on the pad. Um, please do add it. I'll link it again from the Zoom and from IRC. I think it's Camila and Stephanie now, if you want to talk about your stuff. And I, I know um, the Rails Girls program has really only just begun, so a uh, different point in the project, but we would love to hear anything you'd like to share. Hello, are you hearing me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Stefan and I, we didn't uh, prepare any presentation because this was our first month 
but we are working with the API now. Uh, Stephanie, can you tell something about it? <laughs> it's the holiday here in Vancouver, so we are a little slow today. <laughs> we had a big uh, infrared yesterday, it was funny. Uh, but yeah, we have just we started working on the API and we took some weeks to um, understand how it was uh, designed because API, it's something that is kind of new for, for us and we are learning a lot and we are, we are basically right now trying to improve some of the most important endpoints like uh, returning the profiles, uh, the notes and everything and since last week we are working on the profiles. When we finish we believe it's going to be a really good endpoint, but until there, we are learning some stuff, and um, yeah, we we don't have a presentation, I guess, only at the end of September. But what we do is a GitHub project page that everyone can follow what we are doing. So I think that that helps. And I think that's it. Yeah. Great. And while you were sharing, I, I shared a link to your daily blog, um, which people may not have known about um, where you detail your progress. So that is a lot of documentation. Thank you. OK. Yeah, all right. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I also shared a link to the, your project board you mentioned. I really like that. It's a, a really great way to see your progress. Oh, yeah, I already did. I, I posted. The, the oh, link. sorry, yeah. <laughs> I pasted it into other places. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Thank you. No problem. Sagafri, you're next. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'm an audible. Yeah, we hear you. And uh, also, I, uh, if I mispronounce anyone's name, please uh, correct me. I've only typed your name for a very long time. So, <laughs> it's fine. You are pronouncing it very correctly. It's Sagafri. Thank you. Okay, so I haven't prepared any presentation. Uh, so I wanted to show a demo of what I built this summer. So I'm sharing my screen. And, uh, okay. So I, okay, so first of all, uh, I had no idea what I was building. So as a software engineer, as a software developer, uh, I had no idea what this library served, you know, the pur purpose of this library. Right, so uh, gradually I understood that it's basically for the analysis purposes. So all you experts, you know, Sagar Pit, I think we can't hear you. Uh, I can analyze various. Sagarpreet, if you hear us, um, I also typed it, but if you can turn your video off, then it's only transmitting one thing at a time. It might be faster. Yes, I also tried to turn his video off. 
Okay, I'm sure we'll hear from him again in a moment. Sagar Preet, I think left this talk. Yes, I bet he'll be coming right back in though. Yes. I think Zoom crashed on his desktop. So he must be logging in again. Okay. Is it okay if we wait a minute for him to come back? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, maybe he's coming back. You know, while he's not here, can we just go over um, who else is presenting and um, whether or not at the end, um, um, anyone here who's a mentor but not a student might also like to just check in after a great summer as well? Yes, I got pick his back. Great. Hi, welcome back, Sagar Preet. We missed you and we waited. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess uh, I'll give me five minutes. I will get some better internet connectivity. So let's uh, move over to the next presentation. I will give my presentation later on. Will that work? Uh, so, sorry, can you say one more time? You wanted to uh, uh, go a little bit later in the list? Yes. Okay, sure. Yeah, absolutely. We'll put you down lower. Thank you. Good. So that means we can go to Magpie now, calling in from a phone line. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Great. Right. I too do not have a phone. If, if you want me to show any web pa any pages, uh, like I could bring up your profile and click on things and share my screen that way, if you want. Oh, I don't have anything in particular, really. I don't know. Um, well, you've, this you've is Liz, a lot I think. Of work, yeah, Jeff. Um, Jeff, I'd encourage you to go ahead and do that while Magpie talks. It'll be a little abstract. <laughs> but we can all get the sense of, because uh, your work is so visual, Magpie. I I'd love to see it. I like pictures. So I make everything better. But, um, so my work was a little bit different than those because I focused on the kits for public labs and improving the performance of those kits, I guess, as well as making them easier to use by adjusting the camera settings and lighting conditions and I, I did not work in Java I worked in Python instead and I used a Raspberry Pi computer as well as the Pi camera and sometimes I used the USB camera but that was just for comparison and um, I do a lot of different subjects and some examples are the collaborative microscope overlay that provides a scale in real time and um, I made one where you can adjust the contrast in real time. And the most recent one was uh, you could adjust the automatic white balance by changing the red and blue gain in real time to optimize the NDVI processing pipeline. And um, hopefully the projects can be used in conjunction with projects that are already on public labs, such as the spectral workbench or the image sequencer to fully optimize the quality of image for whatever you need them to be used for. I guess that's it. I don't know what else to say. I'm showing some pictures of uh, uh, honeybee legs that you've magnified. Uh, I really like those. That was a while ago. <laughs> uh, we're, we're taking a very high speed trip through your uh, large amount of <laughs> I put the link in the thing, so if they want to, people can go through it at their own pace later. Great, that's fantastic. <clears throat> um, well, let's 
let's see. Um, Sagarpreet, would, would you be ready to go again now? Jeff, you might need to stop. Hey. Welcome back, Sagarpreet. Would now be a good time for you to resume presenting? Yes, I have a stable internet, I guess, now, so I can continue. Okay. Yay. Let me share my screen. Uh, first, try muting your video. I think that might help. Muting my video? Well, muting is not the right word, but yeah. So what to mute? Uh, I did. I think you can press stop video next to the microphone sign, and then you'll only be transmitting one video feed, which will be your desktop, not your webcam. Oh, also, you're mute. you've muted your audio now. Sorry. So no, we can't hear you. <laughs> So right next to the audio mute is, uh, should say stop video. And I think it won't, yeah, there you go, perfect. Okay, yeah, I kind of, I think I did it for him. So uh, sorry, Sagar Preet, I was in your settings. Um, but yes, we can hear you. Please begin. Okay. Okay, so let me start. So basically, uh, as a software engineer, I had no idea. I was building something for the analysis purposes. So data and gradually I, uh, you know, got to know that this is uh, using this library. We can analyze certain environmental trends, right? Please correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, I built this JS library with the help of my mentor, Jeffrey. And uh, I'll quick demo. I would like to show you. So basically, these are certain base layers that we can choose. And on these base layers, there are certain overlay layers that we can choose. So, so for example, uh, this is this map knitter layer, which fetches the data from the map knitter API and shows them in the form of this more small markers, these red, red markers, right? And uh, we have integrated this library to map knitter.org very recently. And this is uh, the current map knitter website. Uh, okay. And soon we will be integrating this library to various parts in publiclab.org as well. And there are uh, various layers that I have to work uh, after GSOC also uh, after GSOC ends. Right. So uh, there are certain real time layers also that I have implemented. Let me quickly show you those. Uh, how to move. Okay, so basically the bottom two layers, these fetches, the data shown on these layers is real time. And it takes like three, four seconds to for this layer to appear. Okay, so this is the layer. And uh, Jeffrey and I were discussing. So basically, this layer we need to uh, uh, take because there are limited request minutes that we can make on this API. So I guess if um, uh, this, uh, ma'am, if you have any contacts, then uh, uh, we, you you can ask those people if they can increase the RPM for this API because soon we will be integrating this uh, library to, I, I guess, to more uh, pages on public lab. So um, this would mean more requests per minute and hence they may block this API. So we have to take care in this uh, immediate future. Okay, so apart from this, there are this justice map layer and this layer, I have made a, a public lab page for more information about these layers. And okay, so future future thing that I have to implement is basically okay for sharing a particular um, combination of layer and a latitude longitude. I have to build uh, some maybe extend the some uh, JS uh, library which is leaflet hash or maybe some maybe I will make that myself. 
so that we can really share that it was also and the combination of words, right to anyone and uh, i guess that's it so, from my side if you have any question you can ask me yeah i really like this this library and uh it's interesting to go to near where you live in that map and see what data is near you. Although a lot of the data that we've requested is based in the US, not all of it is. And I think we'd also like to connect it with um, map sources that are in different countries around the world. So that wherever you go, you might be able to look at this map near where you are and see environmental issues or infrastructure or whatever it is. Uh, to help you understand a bit better about your local environment. Great. It looks like um, okay. we have um, uh, Mayank uh, has uh, put in a put in on the list here. If you want to uh, speak for a bit, that would be great. Well, I should admit, this is Liz. I saw that we had three people here who <laughs> um, hadn't been written down yet, so I just put in Mayank and tech for GT and Fidit, because um, I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Mayak uh, is a, a mentor with us this summer. Mayak, if you'd like to speak, you're welcome to, but of course, it's not obligatory. <laughs> Do you hear us? I think maybe Mayank doesn't hear us. Uh, I'll type to Mayank and then in the meantime, Varun, um, again, you don't have to uh, if you don't want to, but if you want, if you'd like to talk a bit about your summer's work, that would be great. Yeah, sure, I find that all the way. It's always nice to share work. So I didn't prepare some presentation but I think I do have some stuff open here that I can show you guys. Wait, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Which one? This one. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah, so this is the current page for image sequencer. So what we did this summer, like a lot of work was done this summer, like we started off with a string syntax. Uh, it's a way in which we encode our processing steps and put them in the URL. So like if I can show you here, if I add a step here and if I add another one, just any random steps, so then you can see this string right here. So this is generated from steps and their settings. So now this is a shareable URL. Like this can be hit anywhere in the world and they'll see the exact same sequence. So this, we started off with this and then we did a lot more stuff. That is we built a system through which modules are no longer needed to be committed inside image sequencer. They can be independent. So the way we did the invert module was this invert module. This is not a part of the source code of image sequencer. This is being consumed from NPM. So that way we can make independent modules. And then the next step was obviously making sequences, saving sequences. So for example, this one right here. So this is not a module, but this was a sequence of modules that I saved in my browser's local storage. So like even this sequence right here, so let's say this is channel and NDVI, I can say, save channel and DVI thing. And then if I reload this thing and I get rid of this stuff right here. Um, so then I can go ahead and I can say channel and DVI and then it'll apply the same things over again from my browser's local storage. So that was sequences. And then we also have meta modules, which were like modules in, which encapsulate over other modules. 
Sorry, I know this sounds a little bit complicated, but so the way this works is that we we take a bunch of steps and their settings and we combine them all up inside a module. So the idea here is that we can reuse code in other modules. So <laughs> I'll just show you here. I know it sounds very confusing. Even I got confused and I wrote this. So here, so this uh, color bar, this is, a, this is a meta module. So what happens is that color bar applies a sequence of steps and you won't see them like whenever you click color bar. So it generates a gradient, then it color maps it, then it crops it to form a, form a bar, and then it overlays it over the original image. So all this happened on the, behind the color bar. So like even in the URL, if I go here and I say nothing, I just say color bar. And if I reload the page, it's gonna expand itself. So there, there we go. Show the, show the same image. So these are meta modules. So right now these are not complete because the idea is to just hide all of this completely from the, from the user. So in the future, we are planning to make opaque meta modules in which like you won't see all of these gradients and color maps. All you will see is a color bar and all of these steps are gonna happen behind the scenes. So it's like we are trying to put an instance of image sequencer run inside a module so that we can run some steps in the background and then push the result out. So that's, that's meta modules. And apart from that, I will look at, when I will look at my pull request, what all did we accomplish? So, yeah, that's that's the shrink part. That's import image. Yeah. So one thing we did was we minimized the amount of code required to make a module. So there was a lot of redundancy in module code. So we restructured it so that most of it is taken away from the modules and put in a place where all of the modules can use it. So now the modules are like 40% less code. The same module is 40% less code. So that's always a good thing. And that's import new module. That's just importing new modules into sequencer dynamically, that stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, that's not a very major change. Yep. So that's kind of what we did this summer. We also did some small stuff like, like on NDVI images. Now we can see the see the pixel value on NDVI. I can show you. So if I go ahead and I do NDVI, then if I hover over a pixel, it's going to show me the pixel value right there. I don't know if it's visible. That it says NDVI 164. So on any pixel, like it's really black. So if you say it's going to say NDVI 3, and if I go to a place which is really white, it's going to say maybe a higher value. 170, there we go. So there's some smaller features and the, so, so the, this summer, the major work that we did was to do a lot of changes in the core part of image sequencer. So a lot, not, not a lot of supplementary stuff was accomplished, but a lot of core work was accomplished. So this, this sets the, sets the platform for a lot, a lot of future work. So I think I'm going to be working more than I did this summer in the coming months to implement all that stuff. So, and it's been pretty great. So, um, wait, there, yeah. So yeah, it's been pretty great. And I'm gonna thank Jeff and all of my mentors for all the support. And it's, it's always awesome working with you guys. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, th thank you, Varun, especially, I know you've been very patient because like you'll finish a big project and then I'll be like, now can you make the entire thing run inside of itself? And you're like, <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. It's, it's I'll not finish that it by tomorrow. I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it. It's not that difficult. <laughs> yep. And we actually heard some really good feedback this morning from uh, a, a collaborator of ours in uh, Florida who has been 
trying it out and, and saying it, he finds it really intuitive and really powerful. So, yeah. Uh, and we're hearing from Mayank on IRC that uh, he's joined and uh, rejoined a couple times trying to get the audio to work, but right now he can't hear us. So I think he's signing off and um, just saying uh, he really thanks us and it's really great to become part of Public Lab. And we feel the same way. Um, please write him a nice message in IRC. Um, and I guess he'll keep, he might be able to yeah. hear us. Um, great, and Vidit, you're up. Hi, so, uh, so hope everyone could hear me. Yes. All right. So uh, my project uh, was a part of email notification overhaul. So it was about sending uh, recurring daily or di daily digests or weekly digests. And some uh, and the part which I liked the most were some social features like uh, like via comment fee uh, like uh, via multiple reactions and uh, uh, emoji autocomplete. So basically, emojification of uh, us, uh, of our text editors and uh, likes and tons of things. So I'm going to show uh, some demo of it. So I'm going to sh uh, share my screen. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Great, we can see your screen. Just. All right. So, uh, so this, this page was actually made by Gaurav and uh, we use it to, uh, we use it to save our uh, digest or uh, our, our daily digest or weekly digest uh, uh, preferences. So, uh, so we use two things uh, for our uh, digest feature. So, uh, firstly, we use Redis, uh, which is actually a key-value-based uh, pair uh, database, and we have integrated Sidekick in Public Lab, which would monitor all our uh, email-related uh, things. And uh, so, basically, this this is our uh, dashboard currently. So, it shows me everything. So. This shows me that uh, 37 mails have uh, 37 mails have been processed. So don't mind this 37 fail. Uh, there's some bug and we need to fix it. Uh, and uh, so we have to retries. So I can see basically I can see the uh, errors here and I didn't notice this before. Sorry. Uh, so we are going to fix this in uh, future. So. Uh, so um, uh, digest email looks something like this currently. So uh, basically, this is a uh, this uh, list is uh, uh, so this is a list of uh, all the subscriptions, all your subscriptions based on your tags uh, you subscribe, and this would get me everything uh, uh, all. So just a minute. So this uh, this would get me a list of all the notes uh, which are tagged by uh, something you subscribe and. and uh, so yeah, there's a link here which would redirect me to the public lab. So just so this would get me somewhere to my uh, follow topics. So on this too. So this would redirect me to my subscripted pay, uh, subscriptions page, and uh, this would redirect me to my preferences page. Okay, so this uh, part was uh, digest uh, digest related, digest email related part. So and I've uh, built something just like I told you. Just a minute. All right, so I'm going to, uh, going to show you uh, the like wire. 
multiple reactions feature. So I'm going to test it on some node. So let's make a comment. Wait, wait a second. I saw something on that last page that I don't know about. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, so this is on my local machine. So. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'll ask you after. <laughs> so, okay. So which page are you talking about? Oh, I just saw something called related posts. Uh, so no, uh, those were dummy posts, which were created on my local machines, local machine. Okay. So that's not, um, so I'll put a comment here and so just, uh, this is just like GitHub. So if you have used it and uh, so, yeah. So this is something I like, uh, like the most, uh, it was easy, but it was interesting. And we have also used our emoji autocomplete feature. So we can use it something like this. And R. So this would be a, a autocompleted and, um, and for testing out the, uh, so basically uh, most of the people currently don't know how to uh, set up their uh, email preferences for uh, digest notification. So basically uh, you can do it via your uh, email uh, settings page or you can directly add a tag to your profile. So I'll go and uh, Okay, so I so for a daily digest we have this. So this is for daily digest. So if anyone wants to test daily digests, uh, daily uh, digest, so uh, you can add this tag to your profile and you would be uh, receiving mails from. So uh, currently, I guess we have some bugs in our digest feature. So uh, I have been I have subscribed to this. So I have added a start to my profile, but I am not receiving emails uh, uh, regarding my uh, latest subscriptions and all. So we uh, hopefully fix it in future. And so yes, that's all. Uh, uh, it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is, a really, this is a really cool feature. Thank you. Um, I guess, you know, uh, I wanted to maybe very briefly just say one thing that, that I think happened over the summer that we had hoped for that I, I didn't um, realize it had happened as much as it really, as we, as we can see today, um, is that many of your projects uh, overlapped and I know uh, when we started out for example three of you had email notifications related projects and we said we're sure that there's enough work to go around <laughs> and uh, try to coordinate and choose different areas uh, and you did which was really fantastic and it was a really well coordinated summer but even beyond that seeing that for example Magpie's work uh, used some image sequencer and to see that um, uh, sidekick uh, or Redis uh, are used, you know, for, for not just one purpose, but for multiple purposes uh, to see that uh, the Rails um, five, uh, five point, I forget which version, one of the Rails versions was required to get active job. And four point, four point, four point. yeah, so all of these interlinked uh, parts of the site, I think are really cool. Even, even um, connecting to features uh, you know, that, that are not on the public lab site. So I think that's really cool. Um, and I think that it's possible it will go even further. Like image sequencer, we've talked about using image sequencer as part of publiclab.org in some ways um, as, a, as a utility to change images. So uh, great job everyone on, on collaboration and uh, also uh, great work in being like very supportive to each other and helping each other figure things out when you get stuck. I think we've had. Uh, so, uh, so can I interrupt you just a minute? Sure. So uh, last thing I forgot was to thank oh, Sebastian. So, 
he has helped me a lot uh, in setting up the uh, setting up the site setting up sidekick and where it is so because it, uh, i didn't know a thing about docker compose and he helped me like uh, so thanks sebastian and jeff and everyone who helped me. thank you yeah yeah really thank you to all the mentors um, i know mayank had to leave but um, and even the mentors who weren't able to make it here uh, like emmanuel was incredible through the summer uh, uh, even folks who weren't able to spend that much time, like uh, Chinmay, who wrote the first version of Image Sequencer, really provided some key insight at the beginning of the summer. So it's great to see people. Um, and, uh, and everyone else as well. Yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, uh, we've had by far the largest summer of code this year. I think uh, w with um, 10 projects, 11 students, um, we've never had a group this big and we were actually, I have to admit, we were, we were kind of afraid uh, of having a group this big, <laughs> um, but uh, we didn't, we, that was not a well-founded fear. We, 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 uh, it was the smoothest summer of code in addition to being the biggest. So I think uh, it couldn't have happened without people helping each other out and working as a team. So thank you all very much. Great. Well, that brings us to um, essentially the completion of our open hour. And um, this has been um, really amazing. So can, can I interrupt uh, one second? Yeah, go for it. Uh, we wanted to talk about the Google code in, uh, <laughs> in this open hour. We, well, so, uh, OK. <laughs> I'm happy to stay on if, uh, you know, if people want to talk about it and we can go a little past, but I, I really appreciate your enthusiasm about that too. Maybe what I can do is um, wrap up our open hour and stop recording and then we can just do our coordination. Is that okay? Yeah, I think, yeah. Did, Sebastian, were you trying to uh, mention something as well before we wrap up? I don't hear oh, you. Yes, hi. Oh, no, sorry. no, I, I was muted. Uh, no, I was uh, just wanted to thank everyone. I, I, I was uh, really excited to see so much activity. Sometimes it was I was juggling with uh, PRs and the builds and uh, the, the and, and all of that, and it was fun. And and I'm I'm glad that uh, to see that it's it's been so fruitful. Uh, it, we started out with a with our 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 stack not being up to date. And now we have uh, an up to date more than we want, even wanted, and we have uh, lots of nice features uh, replying by email, and they all work great. And our our setup as is even more complicated now. We have uh, services running besides the the application, so so I'm I'm excited that it has worked so well, and I want to thank everyone and Liz and Jeff and everyone who's contributed. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sebastian. All right, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. And I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs>